Seeing the developments in modern science, it may seem that the most important discoveries have already been made. But at least once at some point in your life, an idea of the existence of extraterrestrial life must have crossed your mind, and you wondered whether it was even possible according to modern knowledge. But what do scientists think about this? How do they imagine potential extraterrestrial life forms? In this video, we'll introduce the Kardashev scale that will help you understand this topic in more detail, as well as find out scientists' views on potential extraterrestrial life forms. What level is our civilization at on a universal scale? When we will reach the next level? And finally, what civilization rules an entire galaxy? In 1964, Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Semenovich Kardashev developed the theoretical classification of civilizations, taking into account not only our own civilization, but also those that can be found elsewhere in the universe. The Kardashev scale is a purely hypothetical scale based on our human understanding of technology and energy production. That is, the better your technology, the more energy you'll be able to consume. And the more energy you have, the better your technology will become. This shows a kind of endless interdependence. The original version of the Kardashev scale didn't cover intermediate values. However, Carl Sagan proposed to expand the scale's applicability using interpolation and extrapolation to change it from rank scale to an absolute one. So, let's begin our journey. Type 0 civilization is the human civilization. Level 0 is where we are at. At this level, not all the planet's energy is used. But why hasn't our human civilization reached even the first level? Today, we use a variety of natural resources to generate energy, such as wind, water, solar, and nuclear energy. However, according to the astronomer Carl Sagan's calculations, our current level of knowledge and research is barely enough to call ourselves a 0.7 level civilization, with an energy consumption of about 4 times 10 to the 12th power watts. This value comes from the fact that humanity uses about 0.16% of the total energy resources of the planet. It is so small that if a regular glass of water represented the Earth's entire energy volume, we wouldn't have even sipped a quarter of a teaspoon from there. We'll need another 100 to 200 years to be called Type 1 civilization if the GDP of many countries will grow by 1 to 2% per year. Type 1 civilization is a planetary one. Imagine being able to control the weather from tsunamis to earthquakes we would be able to get energy from everything that surrounds us, even from continental plate movement and regular rain. The electricity problem would disappear. We would stop depleting the Earth's natural resources and become independent from oil. Perhaps then, fundamentally different professions would emerge, such as a continental plate constructor or weather engineer. Type 1 civilization is able to use all the energy coming from the star to its planet, 10 to the 16th power watts to be precise. For Earth, that is about 150 petawatts. One is followed by 17 zeros. This greatly exceeds what humans can use. In 2019, the world's average energy consumption was estimated to be 20.0 terawatts or 0.73 on the interpolated kardashev sagan scale. If we really wanted to use all solar energy received by Earth using current methods, we would have to cover the entire surface of the planet with solar collectors. This wouldn't only be very expensive, but also impractical because humans would be forced to live somewhere underground. However, we can get an equivalent amount of energy in another way. For example, by building large solar power plants in space. 
or by constructing and extensively using thermonuclear power plants. To become a Type 1 civilization, we'll have to convert about 280 kilograms of hydrogen into helium per second and collect the energy released. This will amount to just under 9 billion kilograms of hydrogen per year. Although this sounds like a lot, it's 10,000 times less than in a cubic kilometer of seawater. And since the Earth's oceans contain quite a lot of cubic kilometers of water, we could also produce energy for at least a billion years as a civilization of the first type. Type II civilization is a stellar one. Type II civilization is capable of using any energy emitted by the central star, in our case the Sun, which is 10 to the 26th power watts and exceeds our current energy consumption rate by a billion times. If we could utilize universal solar energy, we'd be a Type II civilization, according to the Kardashev scale. The most famous method for achieving this goal is the so-called Dyson Sphere. The concept of this method belongs to astronomer Freeman Dyson and was developed back in the 1960s. To put very simply, Dyson proposed constructing a system around a star that would collect all the energy and make it available. If you built a spherical capsule around the Sun with a diameter equal to the diameter of the Earth's orbit, you would receive about the same amount of energy that we receive now on Earth. However, in general, we could use all 10 to the 26th power watts. We'd also have much more room inside this Dyson Sphere. Its surface area is 550 times that of Earth. It sounds good in theory, but comes with a few problems. We wouldn't feel the gravitational pull inside a spherical shell. We'd have to somehow make the giant spherical structure rotate in order to create artificial gravity. We would also need to change and adjust the position of this construction relative to the Sun to prevent it from shifting sideways over time. As if this wasn't enough, the material of the sphere must be unimaginably strong in order to withstand the operational forces. And then there might not even be enough material. We'd have to collect it from all over the solar system, disassemble entire planets such as Mars, Mercury, or Venus to obtain massive cores from the interior of gas planets. Even if this was possible, we could only build a 15 centimeter thick spherical structure. It would become an easy target for comets, asteroids, and other things that would collide with the sphere from the outside. But of course, there might be some alternatives. Instead of a Dyson sphere, we could build a Dyson swarm. In other words, many small structures orbiting the sun and collecting as much energy as possible. Then we could either live right there or somehow transmit the energy to Earth. One can also build a ring instead of a full sphere. Or we could look for other methods to obtain the amount of energy required for the second type. Type 2 methods can be used on different planets and thus increase the yield. We could probably just steal some hydrogen straight from the star and use it to power fusion power plants. Those civilizations that have already reached the first level are advanced enough to produce antimatter in large quantities and can use it for energy. We'll need another 1,000 to 2,000 years before we can call ourselves a Type II civilization. Having reached the second type, civilization will populate the sphere in order to completely control it, virtually living in the sun, which in my opinion sounds pretty cool. But even if you've used up all the star's energy, you can go one step further. After all, the sky is full of stars, so why leave all this energy unused? Therefore, Kardashev created the third level. A Type III civilization is a galactic one. In our case, reaching this level means being able to use any energy in the Milky Way galaxy. The power consumption of such civilizations is estimated to be approximately 10 to the 36th power watts, 
which is the energy given by 10 billion stars. Our galaxy has several hundred billion stars, and therefore several hundred billion times more energy to collect. Of course, one could simply surround the stars with the appropriate Dyson structures. As a result, the entire galaxy would be composed of Dyson sphere systems. Energy storage methods would move to a fundamentally new level. But who knows what else such civilizations might come up with? Perhaps they can somehow use the energy released near the supermassive black hole in the center of our Milky Way. Or maybe they can use the energy generated by supernova explosions. One can only speculate. Traveling between the Dyson spheres would become commonplace. We would be able to populate every corner of the Milky Way. Our life would virtually strive for infinity. Our navigation systems would have maps of the whole galaxy, and we would visit other star systems on vacation. In theory, we can look for such super civilizations. The star hidden behind the Dyson sphere is no longer visible, but the sphere itself heats up and throws heat back into space. Instead of a star, we could see a sphere dimly glowing in heat, i.e. infrared light, which is strikingly different from the natural infrared radiation emitted by stars or planets. If each of the stars in the galaxy, or at least most of them, were altered in this way, we would notice it by the changes in the light coming to us from a particular galaxy. Humanity will have to exist for another 100,000 years and constantly evolve technologically to reach this level of progress. Visiting such a civilization would be something from the world of sci-fi. A civilization of this type would be able to colonize star systems and build a large number of Dyson spheres while getting energy from the stars. The galaxy will become a sandbox for a Type III civilization, which is quite difficult to imagine. Thus, the main types differ from each other by a factor of 10 billion, i.e. the energy consumption of Type III civilizations is 10 billion times higher than that of Type II civilizations. The Kardashev scale also interested other theoretical physicists, which is why new civilization levels appeared. For example, some of them rule entire worlds. If you're intrigued, We'll make a sequel about the next levels.